Hello everyone, I'm Mimi Lichtenstein and today I am joined by Jennifer Perez from El Silencio in Costa Rica. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Hi Mimi, thank you for having me today. Super well, excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here too. It's getting cold up in the Northeast, so thinking about going to Costa Rica is top of mind. <laughs> um, I've been lucky enough to actually be at El Silencio myself before and send clients to you guys, and I know how beautiful it is, so I'm excited today to share that with everybody else. Um, would you tell us a little bit about you know, the property and how it came to be, and we'll talk about where it is and then go from there? Sure. So we have a little um, story to share in, with you. This hotel was built in 2008 by, it's, it was owned by a Costa Rican family and a very famous architect here in Costa Rica, which his name is Ronald Sucher. And he actually built the Four Seasons in the end, the Andas here in Costa Rica. So he's one of our top architects. And this hotel was his own project. So it was um, built also respecting the timeline of the landscape. And what he did was kind of just not built on top of the landscape, but respect the landscape and have an immersion, a hotel that has actually an immersion in nature. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, a former guest made an offer and bought the hotel. So now it has a new owner, John Gormally is from the States. He's from Boston, Massachusetts. And he, um, I've been on board with him since then, since 2018. And for the past years, we've been um, upgrading the hotel, building new, we built new rooms. We are about to build our new reception, gym, and a new platform for yoga. So it's been very exciting because before it was beautiful, but it's, it's every time where he's investing more and it's just becoming amazing as an experience to our guests. I saw some of the new villas when I was there and they were spectacular. So we'll have a few of those photos today too. Yes. Um, okay. So for everybody, we're looking at uh, a map right now. So for those of you who are listening, if you want to go um, see it, of course, you can find it on both YouTube and on the website. And typically you guys are closest to um, San Jose airport down here because where this arrow is, this is where you are. And I know that we went, my husband went directly from San Jose to the property. And I think it was about, was it about an hour and a half? Well, actually, um, in 2020, the road was completed. And now the road is completely paved all the way down to the hotel. So that actually puts us an hour away from the San Jose International Airport. So it's also in route to... Um, Arenal to the Arenal Volcano area. So it's a perfect first stop or last stop before departing the okay. country. So a lot of customers actually skip San Jose and they decide even on the late flight, they will decide to come directly to the hotel. And it's, it's fairly close if you compare to other, you know, transfers in the country. So it's always a great option and clients are staying with us because of that because they skip San Jose between three to four nights. Mm -hmm. so, well, I would agree with that. It's much better than staying, for example, at a somewhat boring little hotel at the airport um, when you're only an hour away and you're, you know, if you have a 6 a.m. flight, maybe you wouldn't. But a reasonable flight, it's actually a perfect um, a perfect last night so that you extend your vacation through that last night and just wake up and head out the next morning. Um, all right. And we'll talk about what to pair it with, maybe with Arenal a little bit later. So I love this photo because it shows such like a, you know, the light filled warm inside of the main lodge um, among all of the jungle-ish looking, you know, greenery outside. Um, tell us a little bit about how it's set up, how the, because as you said, it's blended in with the landscape and the mountains. It doesn't stick out above it. Um, but you have all little casitas around in the villas. So tell us a little bit about the layout. Okay. So the area is called Bajos del Toro. And this would be the cloud forest in Costa Rica. Costa Rica has two areas known as the cloud forest. Bajos del Toro is one of them. 
and the other one is Monteverde. So this would be actually an alternative in, um, to Monteverde. Um, the advantage that it has is that it's very untouched. We're the only hotel sitting in this area. So the property is 500 acres of landscape, private reserve, and we actually were very um, sustainable. Our sustainability has been always in our DNA from the very beginning. And we continue to be very supportive in that way in everything that we do and how we also share that with our clients. So um, we actually protect 380 acres of that cloud forest, only 24 rooms. And the hotel is nested in between two national parks, the Paws Volcano and the Juan Castro Blanco National Park, which is the park of water. This region is also known for its amazing amount of waterfalls. There's more than 20 waterfalls in the area. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of water surrounding. This is a good picture because it shows we have rivers going through the property. We actually have three waterfalls on site in the property. And the mountain behind really illustrates that surrounding that we have, the mountain range of the two national parks that are surrounding the hotel. Mm -hmm. So 500 acres, 24 rooms, this once again, perfect picture to show that, showcase how amazing and majestic it is, what we have there and all the lush and green that's surrounding the property. And I so, would like to too, by the way, this picture shows the clouds and you are in a cloud forest, but the entire time we were there, it was, I think, cool and cloudy in the morning, but then by midday, the sky was 100% blue. So don't let a cloud forest fool you into thinking that you're not going to have blue skies. <laughs> so um, every room that we have is standalone as well. So we have suites and villas. This is a one-bedroom suite. It's um, like a little casita. And once again, as I mentioned before, we want our customers to have an immersion in nature. It's called El Silencio Lodge, which means the silence. Mm -hmm. So it's very welcoming to detox, to just relax. That's why also the average stays between three to four nights because our customers want that time to just relax, enjoy their room, read a book, hop in the jacuzzi, go to the spa. But at the same time, we have a lot of activities they can do. So in order to be able to do both, um, a three or four night stay is always a good number. Mm -hmm. And then this is from that same unit. This the is suite suite. From mm -hmm. This is the suite. They all have a terrace facing the cloud forest. Um, they feature a king size bed, a small living room, dining area. And all the rooms also have a outdoor jacuzzi mm -hmm. as well, right. which is really nice. And, you know, when it gets a little bit chilly, it's always nice to cop in. The Agreed. Jacuzzi. <laughs> Agreed. And then you also have villas. I know it's a great would be a great destination if you were going with a couple of couples or a group of a uh, small group of friends. Yes, we have the villas that are actually like residents. They're fully equipped. They have a dining and living room area. Now, all our multi-bedroom accommodations have a fireplace as well and the outdoor jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. So the villas, we, we are offering two and three bedroom villas. As you can see, it's they're really huge, very nice setting and very private. Once again, standalone units. Mm -hmm. And here in the villas, each bedroom has its own independent bathroom. So yes, it's not only friendly to families, but it's also friendly to group travel of friends, couples traveling together. We get a lot of girls getaways. The yoga retreats that we receive as well, they prefer to have the villas because it does allow everyone to have their own room and mm -hmm. privacy, but then they have the common area to share and bond. Yeah, so I it's love a nice it. setup. Yes, mm -hmm. and with your yoga platform and facilities, it actually makes such a great destination for either a small group that's just one three-bedroom villa or getting a couple of them. Um, it's perfect. And then, as you mentioned, you have waterfalls. This is an example of one of them. And I know that we 
took bikes out one day and went mountain biking up, left the bikes. We didn't take it the whole way. I think it got a little bumpier and then hiked the rest of the way, perhaps to the same waterfall. It was beautiful. Yes. We have three waterfalls on the property and they're private. Um, when I tried to um, describe the um, experience of El Silencio, I have to use the word exclusivity. Mm -hmm. It's only our guests who are enjoying the property and enjoying the activities on site. So it really uh, makes it very exclusive to them. There's no other people from other hotels coming here. So the sense of privacy and just the quietness of being able to enjoy these things on your own really makes it special. Mm -hmm. So we do have three waterfalls. The circuit, it's about an hour and 45 minutes to go to all three waterfalls and come back. Um, if someone for any reason does not um, have perhaps the capacity to continue, they can just go to the first one and return. There's always the option. So the picture that we're seeing is La Promesa, the last waterfall, the promise. And it's the biggest one that we have. So it's also um, one of um, a must do when you're at El Silencio. Agreed. And this is a picture my husband actually took from the bottom. And somehow I hiked up to this part of it. So maybe about a third of the way up and was looking down. So you can see how big it is and how tiny I look over there. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. We loved it. I think we didn't do this, but I think it would be magical to take like a box picnic lunch, just the two of you and hike up there. Um, and I love that these are, you know, guided or unguided. You can easily just go on your own. You don't have to have somebody to take you because it's so safe. It's so easy. It's very clear on the directions. And then mountain biking, you guys have a lot of different activities right on property and then even more off property. Um, as I said, we took our mountain bikes partway up to the waterfall and then other people can take them off property, I think. Um, tell us a little bit about, let's talk about some of the different experiences starting with mountain biking. Okay, so actually we added the mountain bikes last year to the hotel and it's been um, very, a very nice add on to our guests. As you were saying, Mimi, yes, a lot of guests, even families, we do have bicycle for children as well. So they'll go into the little town of Bajos del Toro on their own on the bike on the bikes. So we um, part of the resort fee, the inclusions of the resort fee are the mountain bikes. They are available to our guests. We also have rental bikes. Um, for e-bikes for rental. So if someone wants an e-bike, which makes it easier, it's also there available. Um, you can bike, those that are into really mountain biking, we have four different circuits that they can do with our guides going off site. And also on property, they can go, as you mentioned, to the waterfalls. Depending on the time of the year, it might get a little bit more challenging, but it is possible to go all the way down to the waterfalls on the mountain bikes. Okay. So we have four adults and children bicycles available. Perfect. And then horseback riding. Yes. Um, so I'll go through some of the activities that we have on property. So yes, we do have horseback riding. This is offered at the hotel. And also we have the adventurous part. It's, very, it's a very diverse product. So we have for those that enjoy the adrenalina and the adventure, there's a zip lining and it's right at the property. We also have rappelling on the waterfalls, which is really nice. And this is these are great activities for those as well that are traveling with kids, you know, with teenagers. They will just love to do that. There's also fishing at the Gorion River available. And we also have um, the trouts. We have trout farming at the hotel. So you can also go and fish the trout in the ponds or go on the river and do the fishing there. Mm -hmm. So fun. And then different classes to learn about the culture and cooking. Yes. So, um, we are in the cloud rainforest, of course, and there will be sometimes that there's a little bit of rain showers either in the morning or in the afternoons. So we do have a, um, a number of activities indoors. So these are super nice in the afternoons. We have coffee tasting, 
Costa Rica produces coffee and also rum. Um, our rum is Rome Centenario, and the property is actually 45 minutes away from the hotel. So we offer coffee tasting. There's rum tasting. The rum tasting comes with pairing. And we also do wine tasting because, of course, everyone loves wine. And there's also classes with our mixologists, which are fantastic. And they do cocktail classes for our guests. So all these are um, done indoors, and they're really nice activities to do in the afternoons. A good compliment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the more artistic side. Yes. So uh, once again, this is something that both adults and children love. So there's Oscar painting. And you get to take a little bit of that back home. You know, whatever you paint it, you'll take it as a souvenir. Um, we have World Heritage um culture UNESCO we're classified for that as a country in the town of Sarchi and this is where we do the Oscars so we share a little bit of our traditions during uh, during the painting class and once again they can take back home um, the little piece that they do with our uh, concierge nice and it's so colorful and beautiful it would be definitely a nice memento um, mm -hmm. and then a little bit more active again so Archery. My, I had kids who went to summer camp and they all learned to do archery. I've not been someone who's practiced in it, but it's a fun new skill to try and develop as you're on a trip. Yes. So the archery classes, is, um, they're included in the resort fee. All these, um, some activities, I, I will go through that. Um, we have a mystic hike at 1130, which will be included in in your stay, we have the archery initiation classes as well included in the stay. And we offer a wellness class every day in the morning at nine for our guests. So those are inclusions in the resort fee. Offsite, we have, um, this is um, one of the most beautiful waterfalls, Las Gemelas, the water is blue. As I mentioned before, there's more than 20 waterfalls in this region. So Las Gemelas is always a must uh, because it's really the landscape and the color of the blue of the, of the water is really an, a great picture and a great moment to experience. Um, for those that are not going to the Arenal Volcano, because we do have customers that are perhaps not wanting to go to touristy areas and they just prefer to do this off the beaten path experience. So they perhaps will come back to San Jose and head to the south coast or to the north coast and they'll just skip Arenal. There's always an option to do a one day tour to the Arenal Volcano. We're just an hour and 45 minutes away. So that would be a tour that they can do and the, it could be combined with the hot springs. There's also rafting very close to the property. So there's um, a lot of other, there's cultural tours, a coffee tour to the Hacienda um, where we make the chocolate as well. So once again, it's very diverse. It doesn't just apply for those that are adventurous. I know that Costa Rica is known as an adventure destination. Mm -hmm. but there's so much other things to do on the um, cultural side or going to a coffee field or doing a cooking class. So you don't really have to always be active. There's alternatives and other things. And so... You are all Relais Chateau, so you also have absolutely incredible food, much of which is grown on property, like this next photo shows. Yes. So um, we were the, actually the first Relais Chateau for Central America. So we, of course, food is important, being part of the brand. We have our own organic farm. This also is sustainable efforts. So we have the greenhouse, we have the trout farm I mentioned before. We also have our own chickens and our meliponary with bees that are the south forest. They're stingless bees for the honey. And um, we invite our customers to come and um, visit the organic farm. Children love that. And during the cooking classes, we'll go and pick up some of the herbs with the chef and they can also fish the trout. So we try to integrate everything 
that we have there with the experience as well. So our food is really from farm to table. It's um, served fresh. And the trout is one of our signature dishes because we produce it there as well. Mm -hmm. And this is our restaurant. Um, it's called Las Ventanas, which means, in it's in Spanish, means the windows. Mm -hmm. So Las Ventanas, the entire main building has these amazing glass windows from floor to ceiling. So it really embraces and brings the outside in. And it's something that makes it really special when you're dining there, either for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I and it's also on the riverside. And we sat outside for breakfast because it was so beautiful on those high top tables that are right outside mm -hmm. on the terrace. And that was lovely. I think I might have, a, actually I do have a picture here. This is looking out from it. Um, the sun was pouring in. It was absolutely a beautiful setting. So I would highly recommend sitting outside some too. Yes. And it's on the riverside. So you get to enjoy the sun and the sound of the water, which makes mm -hmm. it really nice. Mm -hmm. This is our bar, Toro Bohemio. So it does have a sitting al fresco. And well, once again, even though, um, you know, everyone loves the sun and everything also, this time of the of the day when it gets cloudy, it, it's very mystic and nice. And mm -hmm. the the rooms, the hotels, design also to be enjoyed in this weather, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this the time we were there might have been about this time last year because I believe the World Series was on, and it looks like there's some sort of sporting um, event mm -hmm. on the TV in the picture. So it was actually a really cozy, warm you know, comfortable spot to maybe uh, strike up a conversation with another guest and just have a glass of wine before dinner. We, we really enjoyed it. So and this is our Riverside Gazebo and it's a private venue for lunch or dinner. And once again on the Riverside and it just makes, um, it, it could be a really nice add on to a honeymoon getaway or just a romantic getaway. Or if, you were, or if you have your family with you, you can have a more intimate dining experience here. So it has a capacity up to eight people. And we do both. We do birthday celebrations. We do romantic settings, either for lunch or for dinner. So that is a nice um, experience there by itself. And um, as you mentioned, there's lots of active and adventurous things to do, but there's also lots of ways to sort of relax and luxuriate, one of which is in the spa. And you could have a wonderful spa treatment for two um, in a beautiful room like this. Tell us a little bit about the spa. So 90% of our guests, I have to say, go through the spa. They, it, it, they always go to the spa. This is our conic room. And perhaps the picture doesn't really illustrate how majestic it is. It's a really, it has a cone um, form and it's really, really tall. Ideal for couple massages. And then you have the glass window, which brings a little bit of the green inside. Mm -hmm. Our therapists are super good. We also use a lot of organic um, products from the farming in our treatments as well. And we also have a yoga platform in this area. So once again, every day at nine, we'll have a wellness class for our guests. There, it could be sound healing, yoga, meditation, or slow flow, which would be a combination between sound healing and yoga. The area by itself, the platform, if you can see that backdrop of the forest makes it really, really special. So when you're closing your eyes and doing the sound healing or doing meditation and you can hear the water and the sounds of the forest, it really makes it special and nice. So even if you're not into yoga or sound healing, I can tell you that all our guests go to, go to the wellness class at 9 a.m. Yeah. It's just a tool to relax and enjoy what you have around you. The difference between taking a yoga class at home, you know, I live in New England where it's always inside, except for when my uh, neighbor decides to invite her sister-in-law over to run a yoga class. She's a certified teacher in her backyard. 
I absolutely love being outside and hearing the sounds of nature and feeling the breeze. And it's a very different environment than, you know, your typical home class um, yoga studio that you go to. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And so then let's talk a little bit about sustainability. Um, Costa Rica is obviously a country that prioritizes sustainability as an entire country. Um, and in addition to that, El Silencio has a very big focus on conservation, sustainability, um, the local culture. So tell us a little bit more about your priorities there. Perfect. So yes, um, we, as I said before, have this in our DNA from the very beginning. And we try always to share this with our guests. So during their stay, we invite them to plant a tree. And three months later, we'll send them a picture of their tree. So this helps us continue to have conservation of the cloud forest. Um, it's a little bit of a hands-on experience for them, which they love. And um, in addition to that, once again, we have activities going out to, for example, Doña Olia's house and to learn how to make tortillas. So in this area, the town of Bajos del Toro really relies on tourism. And the tourism that we drive in is the one coming to the hotel. So mm -hmm. we integrate the community as well. We're offering also uh, employment to, to all this area. So, and we try to train them, teach them English, you know, make them grow because it's part of what, what we do. Um, so 90% of our staff is from Bajos del Toro. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, you know, this region was really affected because they rely once again on tourism. So we were very supportive. And I have to mention this because John um, donated an amount of money to the town. We did not fire anyone. Everyone continued on board. So there is a really nice engagement between the hotel and the community. Mm -hmm. um, and well, we currently have in Costa Rica, we have six blue flags for different, you can go on our website and read a little bit more about that. But we're also the only luxury hotel with six blue flags. Mm -hmm. And we have the highest qualification international for sustainability. So we're Elite as well in sustainability. And that goes hand by hand, not only with taking care of the environment, but also taking care of the community and being sustainable. And generating employment for everyone is a big thing too, to us. And I think having it being located in such, you know, kind of a more rural, remote community it can have a lot of additive benefits, or if it wasn't run this way, you know, it could detract a lot from the local community. So I have tremendous um, respect and regard for El Silencio, um, Manta Resort, who we talked with last week about really having it be a focus to be good neighbors and um, bring everybody up with you as you are building this um destination for people like us to come and visit. Yes. All right. Well, let's touch on before we go our end topics. Um, what it's a good fit, you know, what's what's it good to pair with? You mentioned R and all. We happened to go to R and all after we were at El Silencio. So I do think that that's a great um a great destination to pair it with. People could also go, I'll look on the map, um, over to Peninsula Papagayo, all the way over here to the coast. Um, and this whole, you know, there's so many places in Costa Rica to go to. By the way, I've now been twice. I've probably done site visits at 25 or 30 different hotels and gone to all different areas, Manuel Antonio. But I still have so many areas I want to go to. I went to the Caribbean coast, but there's so many areas even within um, within the country in addition to on the coast. The Osa Peninsula down south that El Silencio would be a perfect partner with many of those Um also, Alta Gracia, which opened last year. Um, there's so many. Do you have any other favorites you want to mention? Yes. Well, um, our guests, if they want something like off the beaten path, I would say El Silencio would be a perfect pair with the South Coast. So mm -hmm. to the Peninsula de Osa, 
what they would do is that they'll do the inlands with us and stay a few nights and then go back to San Jose and take the flight down to the south. Mm -hmm. The south is super exotic and it's really being that in the jungle, very different from El Silencio, the weather, the landscape, it's close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's a good combination. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some customers going back to San Jose and flying, flying to the north coast. So they'll go to the Papagayo area where you'll have Four Seasons, the Andas, and other nice boutique luxury hotels that are similar to us. Mm -hmm. um, so the north coast is very developed, I will say. And that's where we have all the chain hotels and the only inclusive properties. They're sitting on the north coast. On the central Pacific coast, we have Manuel Antonio. So Manuel Antonio has no chain hotels, no all-inclusive. It's really a local Costa Rican experience, but it does have very nice boutique luxury hotels. Mm -hmm. And the national park is number two most visited in Costa Rica. So in Manuel Antonio, you kind of have the ocean and the rainforest at mm -hmm. hand. You'll be able to see the four species of monkeys, the chickens, the macaws, the slots. So it gives you really that jungle kick in um, when you come and visit the country. Yeah, I will say that when I was in Manuel Antonio, one of the places that I stayed, I had at least three or four monkeys who came and visited me on my terrace one morning. So um, they are around and they are definitely curious um, and will likely take things if they are left outside on the terrace. So you always have to be careful about that. <laughs> um, and you mentioned, I like to ask about three words that um, you think of when you think of El Silencio. You had mentioned earlier exclusivity, so maybe that's one of them. What might be another couple of words? Um, I also define it as raw luxury because we really are not like a resort with five restaurants and a bunch of facilities. But I say raw luxury because we have maybe not five restaurants, but we have these amazing activities and experience at the hotel. So that kind of really makes it, it gives it a different meaning to what luxury can be for mm -hmm. you. And I would say um, nature um, really, it's kind of what we are. We're that immersion in nature and in, in a really special majestic um, landscape. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and tranquil. I will, I'll add that from my list. Okay. I think that was on my list when I went. <laughs> um, terrific. Well, it sounds dreamy. And um, as everyone who listens to season two of the podcast knows that when you book a property that you hear about um, on the podcast and you book it through me, we give you a special gift. And so Jennifer and I were talking about different ideas and she very generously offered. Do you want to let them know what it is? So we'll offer you a um, Riverside lunch for two at our private gazebo, which is really special and it'll be a nice experience. So that would be our add on for your booking. Yeah, it would be super lovely down by the river. Um, I think we showed a picture of it. I'll just pop it up again there. Mm -hmm. um, so great way to get a little extra um, special treatment while you're there. Well, oops, there we go. So thank you so much for coming today. This was so fun. I love sharing beautiful places that I've been. And I think for um, most of our guests who, whether you've been to Costa Rica or you haven't been to Costa Rica, it is definitely a place that you could go back to. So um, consider it for your next getaway. Um, thank you for joining me. And I will, I know you and I will be in touch. Yes, Mimi. It was great. Thank you for having us. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.